Welcome back to Orion's Flight. Yesterday we sat in the real DA-40. Today we're sitting in a simulated version in the X-Plane 11 simulator. Now pretty soon we'll have the Microsoft Flight Simulator so we'll be able to compare. Uh, the version of the airplane that we're sitting in here is a steam gauge airplane. Uh, we have these round dial instruments which we call steam gauges, that's nothing to do with real steam, uh, but uh, we sometimes refer to the, the main in six instruments that are in front of the pilot as the six pack. It has nothing to do with your chest at all. The We'll go through today um, a very a uh, quick overview of some of the instruments inside the cockpit. Uh, this will translate into the G1000 as well. I'll talk to you about those differences eventually. And then we'll do a very quick flight over to the Healdsburg Airport. Uh, we're at the Santa Rosa Airport right now. We'll go over to Healdsburg and I'll show you um, how a typical flight like that would look. Uh, the other thing I've got up on the screen is the foreflight uh, should be in the right hand side of the screen. Uh, Forflight is an application that GA pilots use for flight planning and then also in the air. Uh, they can often use it if their transponder and their G1000 system can talk to the uh, iPad and so of course that's that's doable in Lulu and you know we use that whenever we go flying. So let's talk about the trim real quick. Um, I made a bit of a mistake in that earlier uh, when I was trying to take off on a runway and uh, I'll kind of explain what that's all about. So in, in the simulator here, um, between the pilot and the co-pilot is a wheel and this wheel is the trim wheel and you can move that forwards and back and right now it's in the nose up position uh, and that means that the trim is set in such a way that as airflow goes over the tail uh, the nose is going to pitch up. If we had the trim wheel all the way in the nose down position, then as more airflow goes over the wing, uh, the trim tab is going to try to move the elevator in such a way so that the nose is down. So it's not bad for it to be somewhat up, but the problem is if you're getting speed on the runway, uh, you can lift off too soon and that could make you stall above the runway, which is not a great place to stall an airplane. So what is the trim tab? We looked at it this yesterday in uh, the DA-40 when we were looking at the tail. So I'm going to jump outside of the aircraft. I'm going to zoom in here into the tail. And you'll notice that uh, the, let's see if I can get that locked, um, the front part here of the tail is called the horizontal stabilizer. Right behind that is the elevator, and right behind that is the little trim tab. Now that trim tab right now looks like it's fairly flat, um, but if I move the elevator up, uh, you notice that stays pretty flat. Move the elevator down, stays pretty flat. If what I really want though on a takeoff is I want that I want that trim tab to be at the takeoff position. And if we go back outside the airplane, zoom back in, you notice that the tab is now a little bit more pointed up. Um, and that's good because that helps keep the elevator um, with its uh, nose uh, more down. And that'll keep us on the runway longer. So let's go back inside the cockpit. Uh, let's get ourselves into a position where I can look out front and uh, we'll take a quick look that the video is set up so I can see enough. There we go. And uh, let's uh, go pre-flight the airplane real quick. We're going to turn on the landing light. We're going to turn on the strobe light. We're going to turn on the fuel pump. We're going to release the parking brake in a second. The prop would be full forward. The mixture would be full forward. The fuel selector would be on the fullest tank, um, which I think we should do that right now. Here we go, we're on the right tank. And we've also got the autopilot prepared and we'll switch the tr transponder into altitude mode uh, and then we'll get going here in just a second. So let me line this up. Let me double check that the video is looking good. And let me zoom in just a little bit so it'll be easier to see. And 
parking brake gets released and we start to accelerate. Now one of the tricky things about flying the DA40 is that the nose wheel is a free castering nose wheel and so there's no steering of the nose wheel. Uh, you need to use differential braking uh, and you're basically moving your rudder pedals or the brakes on the rudder um, in order to take off. Now I took off that takeoff without uh, putting down the takeoff flaps. Um, this meant I had a little bit of a longer takeoff roll, um, but that's okay. Um, we'll do it right next time. So climbing up here, uh, I'm going to try to maintain about 80 knots until we get to about a thousand feet above the runway. All right, and once we get to that position, I'm going to adjust the RPM control and bring that back to about 2,500 feet. At this point, we would have raised the flaps as well. And let's turn on to our heading towards Healdsburg. Now, hopefully uh, with ForeFlight, now this is recording. Last time I tried to run the same simulation, uh, it was not properly recording ForeFlight. Uh, so I'm hoping that will work this time. And I'm going to turn us uh, here in a northerly direction, actually heading about 320. And I'm going to line us up right here with the heading bud uh, that you see right here on the heading indicator. Now the reason I did that is because we're going to switch on the autopilot and when we switch on the autopilot we're going to also press the heading mode. So we're going to get us to about 600 feet per minute if I can. Then I'm going to turn on the autopilot, put it in heading mode, and now uh, let's get ourselves to a vertical speed of 600 feet a minute. Sometimes it's a little bit hard to turn the knobs uh, in flight simulators, but what we've just programmed the autopilot to do is fly in the heading mode, which means I can turn the heading knob to the right and the airplane will turn right, um, or turn the heading knob to the left and the airplane will turn left. And uh, I've also got it programmed to climb at about 600 feet per minute, which you see in the vertical speed indicator, and then we have uh, it armed to level out at 3,000 feet. Now, the six pack consists of the airspeed indicator, the attitude indicator, to the right of that is the altimeter, it's telling us we're passing 1,900 feet. Below that, you have your vertical speed indicator, it's indicating that we're flying and we're climbing at 600 feet a minute. To the left is our heading indicator, to the left is our turn coordinator. Now, the turn coordinator gives you rate and quality of turn, and quality means that this ball that you see here that's uh, right now not perfectly centered between the two lines, I just pressed down on the rudder pedal, and that's going to make it center that ball. You always want to fly coordinated, A, it feels better, and two, it's uh, also, uh, you know, keeps you from spinning your airplane if, uh, uh, if you get too slow. So here we're going out. Um, we might not even get quite to 3,000 feet, but once we get to 3,000 feet, we'll, uh, we'll level the airplane. Um, if four flights working for me, uh, just a quick thing is I can tap here, I can add direct to, it gives me a little magenta line, tells me what direction to head to get to Healdsburg. Uh, I also have the option of pulling up the details on the Healdsburg airport. Um, gives me things like runway information, sometimes it'll give you the weather, uh, most importantly at the top left there it tells you the pattern altitude is 1,280 feet, so we're going to round that up to 1,300 and we're going to enter the pattern um, at about 1,300 feet. Coming back to the map, um, you'll also see the little green um, outline in for flight, and that is your glide ratio, so we're no longer with a glide ratio of the uh, Santa Rosa Airport, but we are within just barely the glide ratio um, of the uh, Healdsburg Airport. So now we're coming up on our 3,000 feet. The autopilot is most likely going to uh, level us out as 3,000 feet. Uh, what I'm also going to do is uh, slow the engine a little bit so we get ourselves to about 9, 90 knots. And here we are.
So we're over the airport. Um, go outside. Um, you know, we've got a day here. Um, where we're flying the DA40. Uh, spin the airplane around. You see some clouds. Uh, you see the, the clouds in Microsoft Flight Simulator are probably going to look a lot better. Um, uh, but even the models here in X-Plane are really quite good. And one of the things I really like about X-Plane is that if you look into the cockpit from the outside, you can actually see all your instruments exactly the way they're supposed to be. So going back inside the cockpit, I've slowed myself a little too much. So let me pitch uh, the, the control throttle forward. I like to typically fly the airplane at around 90 knots um, when I'm in the pattern. So we're going to disengage the autopilot by pressing the autopilot disconnect and then we're going to begin our descent down into Hillsburg. Uh, we should have the runway off to our right, so right where you see uh, the magnetic compass here, uh, the runway we're going to land on is right over here. Now we're going to touch down on the 3-1 numbers over here, um, but first in order to enter the pattern um, I'm going to fly um, over these hills a little bit so that I can get the uh, lined up for what is called the 45 entry to the downwind. And what that means is, is you fly out a little bit further away from the airport and um, maybe slow, slow us down here a little bit more in our airspeed and we want to enter the downwind from a 45 degree angle and that gives us um, the option to uh, come in here and look for other airplanes uh, that might be coming in on the downwind. It allows us to descend over the hills and then we'll have a nice smooth entry onto the downwind. We can also see airplanes that might be departing uh, and maybe staying in the pattern. So all that, those type of things is what we, we think about. Now as we're coming down to 1300 feet uh, we're going to fly towards the runway at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to have to pitch us up to maintain our altitude. Uh, this is also a good point under 108 knots to put down the first notch of flaps. That lets us uh, look over the canopy a little bit better, but I do have to increase the RPM so we don't lose our altitude and we don't get too slow. I'm now turning on to the downwind. Uh, this is effectively, we are paralleling the runway. So if I look over here and I dip the wing a little bit, we should see the runway there. And there's that. And I need to put in a little bit more power here in order to maintain my airspeed and my altitude. Once we've passed the numbers, which is the end of the runway, we're going to begin our descent. So I'm going to go from 1300 feet. I'm going to begin my descent. Um, I am going to get to a point where I can see the runway off my left wing. And then we're going to turn onto the base. So I'm going to try not to make the mistake I did last time where I got too slow, um, but here on the base uh, 80 knots is a good airspeed for the 500. Airplane. And there you go, that's four flight telling me I have 500 feet, and now as we turn to final um, we are turning the airplane and I'm a little bit steep here, but I don't want to overshoot the runway so I can get you a nice approach. And here we are. It looks like we've got the Mark Short final runway, runway 31. We can put in the last notch of flaps. And then we'll begin our descent. Uh, now we want to cross the numbers at about 70 knots. So a little bit high here for this approach. And we're going to come in 70 knots. And I'm going to cut the power over the numbers. And we're going to flare a little bit high there. And that was not the world's greatest landing, but I did get us back here onto center line and shown you what one of these landings could look like. I would have done a little bit better in the real airplane, hopefully. Uh, so here we are on the runway. Uh, you'll notice that in the right-hand screen on ForeFlight, now that we've gotten below a certain airspeed, uh, the ForeFlight has realized that and they said, hey, you know, the pilot probably wants the taxi diagram. All right, so let us taxi the runway, uh, taxi off the runway, and that gets a little bit trickier in the diamond, uh, particularly in the simulator. And let's taxi off the runway, and let's go ahead and stop the airplane. So um, that was our first little flight in a uh, simulator. 
Um, you can tell that uh, the graphics and the video within X-Plane 11 are pretty darn good. Um, and this isn't even an airport that was specifically custom designed. Uh, but we're really looking forward to see what is going to be happening in uh, Flight Simulator and to see how much uh, better that is. So with that, thank you again for subscribing to my channel. Hopefully I am providing you some useful content. And uh, feel free to tell your friends about it uh, as I post more videos about the DA-40, about flying, and uh, both in the real DA-40 as well as the simulators uh, that are available to us. So thanks again, and uh, have a great day.